I hated that word. <laughs> Fortunately, I won't be doing season two. I really want to. Okay, this is your profession. No, no. Oh, that's, that's my chin. Hello, my name is Sumi Yu from Korea Now, and today I am with the most famous personality in South Korea. Nice to meet you, Ken Ri. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having <laughs> me. So, I'm Lieutenant Ken Ri. Uh, I was in the Navy, uh, the ROC Navy, for about seven years. And uh, what's unique about my background is that I was born in Korea, but grew up in the U.S. Uh, after university, I uh, popped back to Korea, got commissioned out here, entered the SEAL teams, and I was a ROC Navy SEAL uh, as a platoon commander. And then uh, back in 2014, I got honorably discharged, and I did a lot of other uh, dynamic work. Now you are gaining so much popularity in South Korea after you appeared mm -hmm. in Katja Sanai programs. Yes. When do you feel you are famous right now in Korea? Um, it's an awkward feeling. It really is because, uh, as you know, I was in the military for a while, and um, my unit it's surrounded by secrecy. You know, I did the Katja Sanai program not knowing that I would become famous. I did it as a uh, instructional program, and it just blew up. It went viral. Uh, it is overwhelming at times but um, I'm trying to take it in as a good thing. Mm -hmm. What was your main motivation to create Katja Sanai? Uh, so it was a collab project mm -hmm. between Physical Gal Gallery, which is the name of the channel, mm -hmm. and uh, Musat. So I was in Musat, and Musat is a uh, consulting company. I was the managing director of that company. You know, it was just an idea, like everything starts with an idea, right? Mm -hmm. And this was just a little idea and we were like, yeah, you know, this might be a good idea, you know? Why don't we do a program for civilians? Because we usually do programs for military and police. That's what Mossad did. But we didn't think that it would get this big, oh. <laughs> obviously. So I think the main reason why this became popular is because it was real. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't fake. There weren't any cuts. And when I did the training, I didn't care about the cameras. And it's like I didn't even know that the cameras were there because I was so focused on the students. I also, because I'm always representing my unit, the Rocky VT SEAL community, um, I can't make this look weak. So when I'm instructing, um, I didn't hear any cut, you know, we'll do this again. There was none of that. It was just real. The students, yeah, they did suck. Um, the training was tough. And yeah, they did cry. You know, there were emotional scenes in there and none of that was acting. So I think that's what the people wanted. So that's why every line <clears throat> you said was so serious. Mm -hmm. And because of that seriousness, yeah. everything that you said from Katja Sanai became a meme. Mm -hmm. And even the one famous meme, No mm -hmm. Munje Isso? Inseong Munje Isso? Became so popular amongst Koreans. I was trying to say, yeah. <laughs> do you have an attitude problem? Yeah. And we say that a lot in the U.S., right? The one that you said in the BBC program, right? I think we have an attitude problem here. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and the funny thing is, you know, I didn't plan to be funny, right? <laughs> I, mean, I didn't say it to be funny. I just said it because um, it's something that I use in the U.S. a lot, uh, especially when I'm training. Why do you put so much emphasis on the attitude? Attitude? Because in training, you need to have a positive and a correct attitude. You could be the most physically fit person, or you know the mentally tough person but if you don't have a correct attitude if your attitude's bad then we don't want you it's part of the selecting process mm -hmm. that's why uh, i put so much emphasis on those those traits then what was the most memorable scene from that show um me throwing number four right <laughs> to the ground <laughs> you know honestly i didn't know that that was going to come out on the show i think uh I got pissed off at him about 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> so you left Musad, so you're not gonna do Katja Sanai season two, right? Uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be doing season two. I really want to, but because it's a physical gallery and Musad project, I uh, probably won't be able to go on there. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. Moving on to your story. Yeah. So what made you to come to Korea after you graduating Virginia Military Institute? Because I heard that place is one of the most renowned military institutes yeah. in the U.S. But what made you to come to Korea? So uh, yeah, it's a bit of a complicated story. Um, I want to clarify. So I wanted to be a U.S. Naval officer ever since I was a kid. And uh, you know, I found out that I was a foreigner by applying to the U.S. Naval Academy. And I think that was my junior year of high school. 
they got back to me, they were like, did you know that you're not American? You're, you're a foreigner. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm American. And then we got into a fight. We got into an argument because I was disappointed. Yeah. You know, I grew up as an American and this guy is saying that I'm a foreigner. So I was offended. So I talked to my parents and I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Who am I? And uh, my parents then <laughs> explained the situation because, you know, I didn't know. I didn't really have a passport or anything like that. I didn't go overseas as a kid. So and then that's when I did know. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll get my American citizenship. So I was like, I have to go to college anyways and uh, forget the Naval Academy. I'm going to go to a better school. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to the Virginia Military Institute okay. because I heard they're tougher. And then during my college years, that's when my parents were like, don't go to the U.S. military because you're, you have Korean blood. And at first I was like, uh, my parents are preaching again. <laughs> but um, over the years, I started to think really hard about my future. And uh, you know, it wasn't an easy decision, but eventually I decided that I had to go the Korean SEAL route because um, my father would talk about, because I was born in Korea, that I am Korean, I shouldn't forget that. And eventually I agreed with it. And, you know, the, the nationality part is very important, I think, because as a military officer, um, you're fighting for your country. When I uh, entered the military in 2007, March. In Korea. Yeah. I entered in March, got commissioned in July, and when we uh, get commissioned, we swear in. Basically, you're making a promise to your country. That's the first time that I felt that I had a country. Before that, you know, I had to deal with so much racism in, in the U.S. When people tell you that, you know, you're not American and they tell you to go to China and they make fun of your eyes, it's like, man, am I really American? How did you learn Korean? My, my major mm -hmm. uh, at VMI, I, I had a, a major and a minor. Mm -hmm. So my major was modern languages and cultures. Oh. So I learned uh, multiple languages in college and one of them was Arabic. Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, my minor was uh, international studies and political science. Mm -hmm. Because of my major and my minor, I had to study abroad, mm -hmm. mandatory study abroad. So I studied abroad twice, uh, once in Morocco, and I studied abroad in Korea. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. When? This was back in 2005. Oh. And the school that I went to was Korea University. Oh, Korea Oh, Korea yeah. <laughs> This was in 2005. Rise up, Korea <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of people would be pleased. I was actually in Gomdobu. Korea Oh, really? Yeah. And that's when, when I started to learn how to drink. Because? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. in my school at BMI, we can't drink that much. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of regulations. <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, I did that. I studied in Korea because I wanted to prepare myself to become a Korean officer. And that's when I started learning history, the language and all that, and the culture and the drinking culture. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best, one of the best times in my college life. Because at BMI, I never felt that I was going to a regular school. In my next life, I'm gonna go to a regular college. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about, let's talk about UDT, finally. Yeah. So let's talk about the acronym first. Mm -hmm. UDT stands for Underwater Demolition Team. Beach infiltrations, or before we get to the beach, you know, there'll be water obstacles mm. so that the Marines can't get into land. Uh, so we would go to these obstacles, you know, tie up demolitions and destroy those obstacles so that the Marines can do beach landings. But we evolved. Now we do counter-terrorist operations, <laughs> right? You know, we parachute in. <laughs> that all happened over the years. So we evolved into the SEALs. Technically, we're not really UDT, you know? Oh, okay. We're SEALs. What's different um, about our unit? It's the, the maritime aspect. I belong to the Navy, uh, and the Navy, when you hear the term Navy, it's water, right? right? But our special forces, we are a maritime, maritime operations force. So that's our bread and butter. And that's what separates us from other units, uh -huh. from other special forces, yeah question about your first BUDS week. Mm. Like there is a hell week during the BUDS. Mm. And how did you feel when you were going through that hell week? All right, so the Korean side, uh, hell week is the fifth week of training. And hell week is really tough because as you know, you know, you don't sleep for a week, but the sleeping is not the problem. It's like you don't sleep and the training is really tough. The Korean side, the water was really cold. The water was really cold. Now imagine this, Hell Week, you're wet, cold, and tired. In winter or? My class started in March, so it was really <laughs> cold. 
<laughs> you know, the waters in Korea, it's much colder than the waters in the US. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, what were you thinking about? Yeah, they, they, say, they say Ipsu, the right? Oh, yeah, Ipsu. Yeah, Ipsu. <laughs> Ipsu. I hated that word, Ipsu. <laughs> 22! Ipsu! <laughs> but you're, you're saying it now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I know it Ipsu. hurts. <laughs> I know it hurts. <laughs> now, on the US side, in my class, it was uh, the fourth week. Oh. So three weeks of really tough training, and then we go into hell week on the fourth week. And uh, the U.S. side, so the difference between the U.S. side and the Korean side, the U.S. side, they're physically tougher. We ran with boats on our heads all the time, running, not just running without any weight, but you're running with a boat over your head <laughs> all week long. The IBS. Yeah, the IBS. <laughs> it's not walking, it's running all week long. And that's really tough. It really sucks. Oh, really? Yeah. Then why? Do they do that kind of hell week during the buzz? Because you need the guys that we can count on. You need to be able to trust your teammates. But if he quits in hell week, oh my god, we don't want this guy. Right. If he can't make it through hell week or buds, then he's not going to make it through that common situation. He might run. He might be the first guy to run. <laughs> and we can't have people like that. So that's why they make SEAL training very tough. So I was deployed to the Gulf of Aden back in 2009. It was the first uh, unit. First combat deployment. Right. Yeah, after, after the Vietnam mm -hmm. War. What our mission was in that task force is to board pirate vessels mm -hmm. and to take pirates down. Uh, the most um, memorable, it's, uh, th the photos are kind of out there on the internet. That, that was memorable because we didn't know that it was a hostage situation. Oh. So this is what happened. There was a pirate skiff, and then there was a Dow, and Dow is kind of like, we call it pirate motherships. We saw the skiff, and uh, the skiff is attacking an oil tanker. I think it was an oil tanker. And that's when we got the call, and we're like, okay, this is a time-sensitive target. We took our ribs, and we went towards the skiff. Mm -hmm. Now the skiff saw us. <laughs> they saw us, and they're running away now. Uh -huh. And we're like, okay, they're hiding the Dow. So we approach the Dow, and we do this boarding, we get on there real fast and uh, we take them down and we discovered something. There are hostages on board. The Dow did not belong to the pirates. Really? They just took down the Dow, the pirates took down the Dow because they had nowhere to escape to. Mm. Yeah. The Dow was actually operated by Yemeni's fishermen. Oh. Yeah. But um, not to go into too much detail, mm -hmm. uh, the mission was a su success. Mm -hmm. It was like within five hostages um, that we rescued or something like that. It's five oh, or eight. Yeah. I heard that you also volunteered as a diver when Seoul Ferry mm -hmm. tragedy happened. Yes. When I heard about it, I was out of the military at the time. And the first thing that came to my mind is that I need to do something. So I looked into what I can do to help. A team was built with American divers mm -hmm. and myself and our mission was to go down there and to help recover the remaining number of bodies because there were a number of bodies that weren't being recovered. The Korean divers, uh, they did a really good job. They did an amazing job with limited equipment and they, they recovered most of the bodies. I teamed up with the Americans because they had, they had special equipment, um, but there was some trouble. I think you heard about you know, between the Coast Guard and the Navy right. about who's going to rescue this and that. And that was still going on. Mm -hmm. That was still going on. And it's kind of a sad thing because we were losing sight of the picture. You know, the, the goal was to rescue or to recover the remaining bodies. And there's this turf war. How did you feel by at that time? <sighs> yeah, I didn't feel very good mm -hmm. because, you know, it was a lot of effort to get the team together. We were ready to dive and all they had to do was give the green light and you know you, you see this turf war and people don't want you to go in because of pride issues i was like wow is this really happening yeah <laughs> is this is really happening you know you want to talk about pride and uh yeah i don't want to go into too much detail about it because i don't want to hurt anybody's feelings but yeah it was a pride issue and that's why we didn't go in Okay, moving on to the reason why you was discharged from the military. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an important question. So my mindset is like, I'm going to be in the military forever. And I'm going to be jumping out of airplanes forever. And I felt like that for most of my military career. Mm -hmm. What changed? 
I went to US SEAL training for two years and I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna make the most elite unit in Korea and uh, that's my next goal. What happened? <laughs> my seniors, that's what happened. But not just my seniors, it was uh, the people under me too mm. that didn't want me to bring change mm. to the unit. Eventually, I mean, we all want the same thing. You know, even the people that were against me, I think they all want the same thing, is to develop the unit. Who doesn't want that? Everybody wants to develop the unit. The problem is our, our methods differ, mm -hmm. right? And I had a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. A lot of pressure, so much pressure that I knew that I couldn't do this in the military. I needed to leave to continue my mission. Mm -hmm. So my mission is to develop the national security apparatus of our country. Oh, you left the military to do whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm doing more than I did than I did in the military. Oh. I'm doing more right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, because I wanted to become an officer so badly and that was my dream job, it wasn't easy to leave. But it is the way it is and I have to leave. And uh, was I afraid to leave? No. I knew what my mission was and I knew that when I get out, I would fulfill that mission. How would you describe your life in three words? My life in three words? Mm -hmm. I choose my own fate. I have more than three <laughs> words, right? Uh, I say in Korean, I say, uh, mm. I think the decisions that we make and the actions that we do, mm. that chooses our path. Mm. You know, that makes our path mm. and that makes character and that makes us who we are. The very last question mm -hmm. is, what is your recent goal or plan? I like to think that um, I have accomplished my goal but my goal is unique because it's a continuous mission, mm -hmm. you know. I hope that the Korean military, the Korean military is a very strong military and uh, it's, it's in the top 10, but mm -hmm. we always have ambitions. So I hope uh, one day it'll be the top uh, and I'm gonna continue trying to develop the Korean military, not just the Korean military, but the national security apparatus as a whole. And hopefully I'll come up with much, much greater results. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 포술 한 번만 보여주세요. Oh, okay. I'll show you one uh, simple technique. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is uh, we'll, we'll do one disarm technique. Mm -hmm. So if I have the weapon aimed at your head, mm -hmm. you want to take it away, right? If you're close up to me, right? I know that I can take the weapon away from you. But what's my instinct? I put my hands up. I'm like, don't shoot me, right? Okay. I'm trying to act like I'm scared. Don't shoot me. But what do I do? <laughs> I grab the weapon like this. And this first step is very important. Why? Because as soon as I can't the weapon like that, and you pull the trigger. So pull the trigger. Right. I'm okay. Am I dead? No, because the weapon's pointing in a different direction. Once the uh, bullet flies, the second bullet will not fly. Why? Because the slide didn't move. Oh. I'm holding on to the weapon, oh. the slide can't move. Uh -huh. Which means that it didn't chamber the next round. Mm. So you can pull the trigger all day and it's not gonna fire. Mm. As long as I'm holding it mm. like this. So how do I take the weapon? Pull the weapon again. It's all right, just, just hold it to my okay. forehead. And I'm like, oh my God, don't shoot me, don't kill me, don't kill me, <laughs> boom, <laughs> boom. <laughs> So I'm gonna do it to you and you take the weapon away from me. Okay? Is it gonna be possible? It's really easy. Okay. Okay. So I have the weapon mm -hmm. on you. <laughs> but, but when you go like this, I can see it coming, <laughs> right? Oh, 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 I, I suppose to do this. Yeah, yeah, you, you wanna be what, fast. Oh, what because if, if, I you just do, do this? if you do it slowly, then I'm just gonna go, whoa, don't take my weapon, right? <laughs> The next one that we talked about, yeah. the arrest technique. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do an arrest technique. Weapon up and we're gonna say, get on the ground. Get on the ground, get on the ground, eagle spread. From the side or 45 degrees. And the important thing is three points of contact. Ah. So I have one, two, and three, right? And this is, <laughs> are you okay? Yeah, yeah. I have three points of contact and this is the position that I wanna get into. Three points of contact is very important. It's the, uh, the neck, the back, Okay, and the wrist. And what I eventually do is I need to get that cuff on this wrist first. Oh, okay. And then when I'm ready, I scoop the next hand. That's why we have to do three points oh. of contact. It was hard to yeah. do. So, so we'll do it on the opposite side. Just, uh, 
go down. Opposite side? Is it really necessary? Uh, <laughs> it's not necessary. So let's say you're cuffed, okay? okay? The handcuffs uh -huh. are on, okay. okay? I need you to get up, but I'm not going to carry you because I'm going to get tired, right? Uh -huh. So you're going to help me come up, right? <laughs> because I'm pressing... <laughs> because I'm pressing... <laughs> It's okay. What happened right what now? Happened? I, I didn't why, do anything. Why did you get up? I didn't right. do anything. Right. I didn't do anything. How did you do? It's a pressure point. So so let's see that again. <laughs> again? <laughs> let's see that again. So you're cuffed. And I'm pressing against your neck. And what are you going to do? It hurts, right? right? So So the pressure point makes you get up. I need you to stand up, but I don't want to help you up. Uh -huh, I want okay. you to get up. Okay. You don't want to listen, right? No, 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 I'm going to listen. <laughs> but let's say you don't listen. Okay. What happens is there's a pressure point here, and if I hit that, then, then your knees are going to come up. Okay. So we're going to try that, right? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so you want to try it on me? Yeah, okay. revenge time. <laughs> and then grab my wrist. Grab my neck. There you go. There you go. And twist me up. Okay. Push harder. It's okay. Oh. Got to push harder. Much harder. There you go. Okay. Okay. This. That, this is a revenge. No, no. Oh. oh, that's that's my chin. One, two, three. If no, you just get. It. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it one more okay. time, guys. Watch it carefully. Okay. One, two. I'll help you. <laughs> Alright, lift me up, come on, come on, come on! <laughs> so, I had a really great time with Ken Ree. And what about you, Ken? Oh, I had a good time arresting you and, uh, you know, taking your weapon away. I hope you guys enjoyed this video too, so see you guys then. Bye! Bye! Bye. Please wave! <laughs> then who would you want to do the next survival program with? Um, anybody. It, it could be Bear Grylls or it could oh, be Ed Stanton. It's going to be so interesting. <laughs> yeah. uh, who knows? Discovery Channel, please. <laughs>